Like this. Does it hurt? Mm, a little bit. <laughs> Work, I'm the king of multitasking, I feel like sometimes. All right, let's get it started. So, <coughs> you're gonna hear like some buzzing in the background for this interview right here. And for the people who are watching me on camera, I'm kind of like laid up, but um, I'm in the process of getting a tattoo. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Big shots to the, to the tattoo artist is doing it for us here. You know what I mean? Very cool gentleman. And we have the owner of Skin Deep Tattoos over here on the Danforth. Um, we have Tanya in the, in the building. Right? Hi. Um, and it's, it's a little bit different, like, I was, I'm, t like I'm talking to the audience here, like just doing this interview while getting this tattoo but i appreciate you because this is like a hookup <laughs> from you guys over here at um skin deep tattoos yes of course now it's a special place because besides just being a great place for artwork and stuff to be put on people's bodies something really tragic happened last year summertime okay um, um what we're talking about is the danforth shooting that you know made national news yeah. you were in this situation <laughs> That night, tell me a breakdown of what was going on with, with you in the shop and what was happening prior to that. Um, well, I was getting ready to go out to dinner um, with a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Last minute, he stopped by and we, literally two seconds away from all of this happening to us, right. um, we walked outside, ready to hop on the bike, had our helmets on. And um, he's like, hold on, I gotta go to the bathroom. Mm. So we turn back in, he runs downstairs, and because he ran, by the time I was like halfway down my stairs, I heard gunshots. Wow. Yeah. So when you first heard the shots, and we've spoken off camera be before, but when you yeah. first heard the shots, did you know that they were gunshots right away? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And did you hear like one or like just a multiple shots? No, it was multiple. Um, at first it was probably, I think, I don't know, probably about five, five or six. Five or six. Um, after the first one, as soon as the second one hit, mm -hmm. I, knew, um, I knew what it was. Mm. And for some reason, I decided to run. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. With that scene, right? The shooting happened. There's pandemonium going on in the streets, right? You're in here. Mm -hmm. Do you know about the pandemonium going on no, outside? No, no. And it's it's so weird because when we walked outside in the summer on the Danforth, like it's crazy busy mm -hmm. all the time, um, and there was like nobody around. Right. But we didn't really take. Honestly, we didn't really take it in. We were kind of just like in our zone, like ready to go out. Um, yeah, like it's, we had no idea. So when it happened, um, when I ran upstairs, as soon as I hit the top of my stairs, mm -hmm. they came flying in my door. Who, the, 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 the people fleeing off the street? The, no, it was a mother and son who was shot. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So then what happened then? Well, to be honest, like, I felt kind of bad because at first, I like being in the city and stuff like sometimes I don't know they came in they're screaming something about a gun I didn't really even see their face to mm -hmm. be honest like the whole thing just happened so fast right. all I heard was there's a gun there's a gun there's he has a gun he has a gun mm -hmm. so I was like get the like get the fuck out like what are you doing I didn't know that it was a mother and son like I really wow. did it's so hard to explain unless you're in that situation yeah 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 um they like literally did not have a face i just i don't know i yeah i don't know but um yeah i kept telling them i was like get out get out and then it kind of like clicked all of a sudden mm -hmm. and i looked at them and it was like this older woman mm -hmm. and um her son actually and the mom just was like please 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 and i looked and they were bleeding everywhere so wow. I just like so, I brought, sorry to interrupt you. Where yeah. were you, did you see where the blood was coming from? Or I just seen that there's blood like all on my like all in the front entrance. Wow. So I just locked the door, um, brought them inside the second door, locked that door, mm -hmm. helped the mom and the son both downstairs. By that time, my friend came out of the washroom. Mm -hmm. He's like, "What the fuck is going? Like, 
what's going on. Yeah. So I put them in two tattoo chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept, I was like trying to call 911 and I didn't really like look at where they were bleeding or anything at that point. Right. Um, there was no way I was getting through to 911. Like it was busy. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this, something's up. Like, since when is 911 busy? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I was just, after that, I just hung up the phone. I told him to keep calling and I threw some gloves on. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked at the mom first, and she, her leg was grazed by a bullet. Mm. Um, you could tell it was grazed, but she was bleeding quite a bit. Um, so I just ran to the back. I grabbed uh, I had a pair of like tights and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Then I just grabbed it, tied her leg up with the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, I went over to him, and I was looking at his leg, and it was like clearly shot. Wow. Um, and he, he, it was like, you could tell it hit something, like a main, main artery. Yeah. Um, so I just, I was trying to see where the bullet went in, where it went out, if it did go out. Um, and I just tied off his leg also. Mm -hmm. And I was like trying to see if the bullet was still in there. Yeah. I didn't want to apply pressure and like lodge the bullet into like his vein or something. Yeah, <laughs> then yeah, I kill yeah. him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just kind of did that, just pacing back and forth, swearing a lot. Did you realize now at this point that there was like a shooter outside? Like, no, because went? they were they're. Uh, I don't want to get their background wrong. I think they're Korean. Mm -hmm. um, so there was like a huge language barrier. Okay. Um, I felt so bad because I was like swearing and going back and forth because all I kept thinking about like I know the protocols having a tattoo studio like I know the standards and whatever and I knew that it was gonna be hell for me because of the amount of blood that was in here yes like it just contaminates everything and at that point there was blood everywhere mm -hmm. um so I was kind of just I was going through my own shit at that point yeah um he couldn't get through to 911 so I just well when I brought them down I shut off all the lights so, cause I didn't know what was happening and yeah. I didn't, I didn't know if they were being followed and I didn't want the guy to know that they came in here, obviously. Yeah. And could you hear the people screaming outside? No. Mm. no. All I, all I heard was gunshots and then I could hear like, after I got them in and kind of like propped up, I could hear men like screaming and my window at the front, it's got like, it's got a mirror so it's kind of angled yeah. so you can see outside, right? So I was standing under there trying to see what was going on mm -hmm. and all I seen was like SWAT guys and like, it was just crazy. So once I stopped, there was like a shootout. You could clearly hear it. Yeah. Um, Cause they had a shootout with the, um, with the accused or with the, with the guy, with the shooter. Yeah. So what happened was, I guess like after the people who came in here, mm -hmm. the guy started off further down, like by Logan, I think. Yeah. And he zigzagged all the way down the dam for us. Wow. And um, so from here, he went straight down to seven numbers, which is like six buildings down. Mm -hmm. Shot like, I think it was like three people in there. Wow. Just went off. And then that's, I think when he got intercepted by the cops. But it's really strange because um, it all started at like 10, I think it was like 10 to 10, or mm -hmm. I don't even know times to be honest. I shouldn't even say that because I don't know. It but was and, around that time. It took 20 minutes for any police to be on site. And what's so strange is he, the guy was eating at Pizzaiola or something down mm -hmm. the street. And the owners from there called the police. It was like, there's this guy who's acting really strange. Um, like he's putting off weird vibes, whatever. And no cops like showed up yeah so there was no cops ambulance fire nothing honestly. so they got a warning pretty much prior to the shooting even happening kinda. and if you know damn forest you know there's always there's a cops. lot of cops on like, the street yeah come on yeah you know there's always wow. cops around here um but yeah once the shootout was done i just waited till i couldn't hear any more gunshots and mm -hmm. i ran upstairs and flagged the cop down and yeah and like R.I.P. to the deceased and, and condolences to the families, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Like, this being a traumatizing experience, like, did you see the deceased on the scene at the same time when you came up? Like, when you finally came outside? No, they were down the street, um, probably about two and a half, three blocks away. Mm -hmm. At this point, I didn't, I kind of knew what was going on because the son, he could speak English. Right. Um, kind of like broken English. Mm -hmm. So he kind of filled us in what was happening and it was so surreal. Um, when I flagged the cop down, he came down and to kind of like tend to the people, he was like, okay, well, <laughs> I don't need to do anything cause like yeah. it's already done. So he was kind of filling us in. And that's the one thing that really got me is both of the girls who were killed were so young and like i've got two kids of my own mm -hmm. um and the youngest she's around the same age as my son wow and i was literally supposed to, my son was supposed to be here that night mm -hmm. um but i just didn't pick him i was like you want to what i'm gonna come get you tomorrow just chill yeah yeah and um yeah, so I was just kind of playing that in my head. Yeah, it um, hit home that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow, wow. And one thing that I did notice in the, in the, in the City TV news special, they were talking about how the community came together and started helping you to get the shot back together. Um, prior to that, like once you did your first initial cleanup of the blood around, like what did the place look like? I wasn't allowed to even be in here. Mm. Um, for one, it was like, I still came in, to be mm -hmm. honest, because my dogs were like in the back and whatever. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't allowed to touch it. Hazmat had to come and legally clean it. Mm -hmm. So at first, um, the city was like, we'll cover it. No problem. And then I waited probably like 12 hours, nothing, calling them. I'm like, we need to do something because... I have my blood borne and pathogens. Like I know what happens to blood when it sits. Mm -hmm. And there was literally like, there's blood everywhere. Yeah. There's upstairs, like I had to buy new beds. I had to buy anything in the booth mm -hmm. that were in the booth. Like I had to replace everything. So everything is all brand new. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Do you think that the, that you're dealing with any post-trauma from that, from this experience? Um, I don't, honestly, like, I'm not going to lie. After everything happened, the news and, like, every other aspect around the whole event, they, for some reason, focused on me. Mm. Um, and I knew kind of things that like I guess other people didn't know because the cops were like telling us things as they were happening. Yeah, yeah. So I was really like, if, honestly, it was like I was a celebrity and there was paparazzi just camped outside. Like really? it was so crazy. Um, and like I'm a really private person. If you know me, like I just am not that person. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of do my own thing. And um, it was very intrusive. And I just felt like I was getting a lot of like negative um, feedback and people just, you know how people are. Like what kind of negative feedback? I got a lot of negative feedback. Like online feedback? Yeah. So, okay, well give us a couple of examples of like what kind of crazy shit is people, are people out there um, trying to say? Okay, so the first news article, like the first news, I guess, article or report or whatever interview mm -hmm. um, wasn't done by me. It was actually done, I found out later, by my old boss. Okay. Who owns a tattoo studio up the street. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how everything broke. And um, I guess he was like the first person to like call in mm -hmm. and they just kind of honed in on whatever positive they could take from it. Yeah, yeah. Now, like being now after dealing with everything, I realize why. Mm -hmm. um, so once that hit, it just kind of like exploded. And within a day or two, I found out that the city wasn't covering my stuff. And I'm not really one to share too much on social media, mm -hmm. but I, I was like, Losing my mind. This business is something that I've literally invested everything that I've worked for for so long. And yeah. like, it's just, it's my one thing. It was like my ghetto, my state, like stability, my kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, future. future. 
And um, I was going to lose, like I literally would have lost everything. And my friend had set up a GoFundMe account, mm -hmm. which I was completely against because um, I knew it was going to get negative backlash. Right. And it did, of course. So people were really honing in on that. And um, they were just like, oh, this girl's using this opportunity just to as a cash grab and whatever mm. and I was, I was just like if you put yourself in my shoes like imagine you you work so hard and like you finally do something right in your life right. and you're like on that path and like something completely out of your hands fucks it all up and it's gone yeah. within like a second they're not also keeping into account the fact that you helped two wounded people that came in from oh, like <laughs> a crazy mass shooting right? yeah they don't it's and the thing is is like even with that i found it so strange <laughs> i don't like i'm I've, i don't want to like sit here and like boast about myself and whatever but i've always kind of been the person where like i i don't know i didn't always have everything growing up and mm -hmm. like we did struggle and you know even just simple things we didn't really have so everything's right. kind of like I didn't really have any, I never have any attachment to like any physical things or like materialistic things. Mm -hmm. So if somebody needs something, I'll give it to them. I don't, I really don't care. Right. Or if somebody, if somebody's hungry and I know, I don't care if you're my enemy. If I know that you're hungry, I'll, I'll give you food. Right. Like I'm that person. So for people to make such a big deal that I help two people that were literally bleeding yeah. was like, I and was that's so like dumbfounded by it. I couldn't believe it. So you have the grand opening that, you know, this is one of the reasons that we're, that we're here in the first place, right? Yeah. Um, because you got the grand opening finally a year later or almost a year later, the doors are, the doors are essentially open already, but the final, like the grand reopening is happening. Okay. It brings me to opening a tattoo shop in the first place, right? <laughs> What inspired you to, you know, and we can see you're a tattoo enthusiast, right? <laughs> what inspired you to open a tattoo shop in the first place? Um, honestly, growing up, I was kind of that, like, I didn't really fit in. I, it's weird, because through school and everything, I was kind of friends with everybody, mm -hmm. except for the cool kids. <laughs> okay. Or the bullies and I would be the person who would beat up the bullies. Mm. So I was good with basically everybody. Um, I did, like, I just meshed with every clique, but I didn't fit in anywhere. Right. So I was kind of just like on the bad, wrong path. I was a troubled child, mm -hmm. dealt with a lot of personal issues within my family and whatever. And you um, grew up in Nova Scotia? Uh, no, Nova Scotia here. And honestly, like my family, we moved so much like i went to nine different elementary schools wow yeah like it's i was constantly moving so i didn't really have a chance to like build those relationships and mm -hmm. i was used to kind of like having relationships and then just leaving yeah. and i was like okay bye like um so i used art as my escape mm -hmm. and it was like my way of kind of being able to like I don't know, just take my mind off of things that I was going through with my family and right. with whatever else I was dealing with in life. And um, yeah, I was in a really bad time in my life. And uh, an ex-boyfriend actually bought me a tattoo machine mm -hmm. and was like, here, you can do this. Like whatever, I always kind of wanted to get into it. Right. And um, this guy, my old boss, he actually gave me an amazing opportunity and I really just went with it. Nice. And um, yeah, but once I was working with some, like for other people, I'm just not that person. So I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this. Do your own thing. <laughs> I do my own thing. Yeah. And um, yeah. What are some of the struggles as a woman being an, uh, a business owner compared to just being a business owner, period? Yeah, being a business owner, period, is just, uh. yeah. um, I think a good thing for men is men, I can't say always, but normally aren't so emotionally, are you done? <laughs> so emotionally invested in everything. Mm -hmm. um, and being a woman, 
I don't want to sound like a dick, but like we kind of like to control everything, and it's yeah. kind of like we need to micromanage, and we just need to be that. Per- we need to know what's going on at all times, and I've definitely had my ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Um, my turnover rate has probably been one of the highest in the city. I'm <laughs> like turnover for like um, hiring, imp- and firing, wow. hiring and firing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think. A big thing is, is like, I'm never really one of those people that's like, oh my God, women have it so hard and mm-hmm. equal rights and whatever. I feel like where you fit in, you just go. Just and it's you just, do. you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, being a woman definitely is challenging when it comes to male artists. Mm-hmm. And it's also challenging coming when it comes to female artists. Um, when I first opened my studio, it was all female mm. for a very short time. <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, that was a different experience. But um, I feel like it's just, I don't know. It's all new. Like, yeah. you just have to, it's, you have to learn as you go type of thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, one second. I just want to take a quick break to, to give a shout out. To, and I, I wish I could say your name on camera, but he chooses not to. You know what I'm saying? But he hooked me up with a sick ass tat right now. You know what I'm saying? Crab life right here. Cancer life, you know? Holy. Oh, you were right. It's dope. <laughs> He's like, cancer? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just a crumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a cancer. You know what I'm Give me like seafood. Thank you, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Um, let me, let me get back okay? into it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> because it's weird. Like, I'm focusing on the interview. Yeah. And I kind of got lost in like the, the conversation. They didn't feel that. I, but I was feeling it though. <laughs> Every, every once in a while, like my my sensories check back in, like oh yeah, 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 yeah. It just kind of hurts, but it's 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 the reward at the other side, right? Yeah. Um, brings me to another question. Okay, as somebody who has multiple tattoos, okay, do you get the people who are like, like, is there pushback in the world? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Talk about some of that pushback as like a, a tattoo enthusiast. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> well, th- that's what I'm calling it for today. Um, I think it's kind of weird because I'm sure anybody who has multiple tattoos that are visible um, mm-hmm. would agree. We kind of just forget about them. Yeah. Like we have them, but like I don't see them. Yeah. Like when you, you're getting ready and stuff, you're not really like focusing on your tattoos. Um, so when you do get like when i'm walking through a mall or if i'm in a restaurant everybody will stop and stare mm. and it's like me being who i am i'm like what the fuck are you looking at yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. can i help you um and then i'm like oh yeah fuck i decided to tattoo my throat and my face so <laughs> they're like they're staring at the tattoo on your throat yeah, yeah. so yeah. let's talk about some of the, so the tattoos and stuff like that like Give us mm. some of the symbolisms, like the one on your throat. What inspired you that? You have to go for like the darkest one. I go, you know, that's all I do. Um, the one on my throat. Hmm, that's kind of like a weird personal one. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I really describe. I guess it symbolizes like Baphomet, which is satanic and whatever, mm-hmm. but. That's not, how, I guess it's kind of how you interpret it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't worship the devil. And like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not some crazy shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just kind of like how I look. I used to be so into religion and stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I have aliens on me. So many times. Yeah. Um, I just believe we are living in hell, mm-hmm. to be honest. Yeah. And when we do pass, it's like a relief. So it is heaven. That's yeah. kind of how I look at it. I don't know. It's changed throughout the years how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, I was just at a weird place, I think, when I got it. You have any tattoos that yourself, and then I'm going to take this question and direct it to some of the customers. Right? Okay. So for yourself, do you have any tattoos that you ever regretted? Oh, yes, I do. Almost Let's talk all, about it. A lot of them, actually. Yeah, a mm. lot of them. Um, majority of them. Not that I regret having tattoos. I love my tattoos. Yeah. I just regret 
what they are. Like, it's kind of just like fly by night, like on a whim, like, okay, let's do this. Something you wanted at the time, but now in the future you don't and want even, kind of thing? Like working in tattoo shops and stuff, you'll have like an artist that's free mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. And they're like, who, you want to, let me tattoo you. I just want to tattoo you. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I can see that. You end up with stupid shit. Yeah, you just have just the access to just ink yeah. and tattoo guns and like and boredom yeah, yeah 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 i would imagine if i worked in a tattoo shop or if i was just around all the time yeah i'd probably be more covered than you i am it? i'm really surprised i'm not more covered than i am yeah um when you get older it hurts a lot more and it takes a lot of energy <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh god like i have to mentally prepare myself for it yeah. yeah what is one of the worst or what is one of the biggest, like if a customer comes in, right? And they're like, yo, can you do a cover up for me, All right? What's one of the biggest regretful customers that's ever come in here and be like, please cover this thing. What was that thing? Without blowing up the customer, obviously. And then what did you do to cover it? Honestly, I'm gonna say this and I don't care if I blow up the customer. Mm -hmm. um, going to their cousin, their boy, or whoever it may be that will do that whole half sleeve or whatever for two hundred dollars, mm. and they come out with sh some of this, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and they want us to fix it after the whole sleeve. Uh, you would, you should see some of the stuff that people come in with. How do you cover a whole sleeve? Honestly, like I, um, I have a friend who has a laser machine to do removal mm -hmm. so we kind of bounce back and forth um i'm not gonna drop any names because mm -hmm. industry but secrets <laughs> <laughs> this industry is cutthroat yeah, um, yeah no but yeah he he helps me out he helps us all out i guess that's and dope like, yeah. so you're telling me and without blowing up the industry secrets that there's a combination when it comes to like covering a big tattoo a combination of removing some and then doing some cover up at the same time. Honestly, like I think um, no matter who the artist is, they would rather work with a blank canvas rather than trying to, to cover, like manipulate yeah. and figure out how the hell we're gonna cover this thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Like it, nowadays, like it's just so much easier just to take it off. Yeah, just, just get rid of it. Take it off and start fresh. You know? Yeah, they say it hurts more when you get rid oh, of it. Oh, I got one removed. Yeah. Let me tell you, it literally felt like bacon grease was being like wow. poured on my. Skin. Yeah, it's bad. It's that bad, eh? Oh, it's, well, when I did it, it was that bad. Wow, yeah. wow. What about for like young people who are coming in for tattoos and stuff like that? You got a lot of rappers these days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who are getting tats on their face and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you ever try to advise them not to, or do you just go with the flow? All the time. I always... Okay, I had this client come in one time. Um, oh. Hey. Um, sorry. Sorry. That's cool. Um, I had this client come in one time, and it was a young gentleman. He was about... He was 15, turning 16. Mm -hmm. And he was with his mother, and he wanted to get, I forget what it was, on his neck. Some script on his neck. Like, literally on his neck. No other wow. tattoos. And I was like, okay, listen, no. He I'm had not, no other tattoos? No other tattoos, none. And I'm like, no. Yeah, she was trying to convince, she was like, she got offended. I was kind of, I might have, like, overstepped in a way. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I am a mother, so if my kid walked into somebody's shop... And wanted his neck tattooed. You better be telling my kid to get the fuck out of your shop. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of caused like a little bit of issue. But uh, we like, I've been very lucky that most of the artists that I've had come through my doors mm -hmm. have those morals where they're gonna be like, no, sorry, yeah. we won't do it. Um, and I find a lot of artists nowadays professional ones at least mm -hmm. um share those morals so it's pretty good yeah yeah, yeah. um wow I got, a, I got so many different questions <laughs> that pop into my brain um as a woman in the tattoo industry again okay um i remember we interviewed um my my, my tattoo artist right um christine Nobel, right okay um 
she told us a story, a crazy story, early, early in our seasons, right? Um, and it, co- it coincides with the whole the hashtag Me Too movement, oh, yeah. right? This is before the hashtag Me, Me Too movement had even sparked off. Mm-hmm. But she told us a crazy story. Now, as you as a woman in the industry, and an attractive woman, right? Um, do you deal with any of those hashtag Me Too situations? All the time. Um, Give us a couple of examples. Well, actually, one of the reasons why I wanted, why I first started off as an all-female tattoo studio Mm -hmm. was kind of to give, well, it wasn't kind of, it was to give women a safe space um, to work without being sexualized, without being harassed, without being pressured and, like, manipulated and whatever, because I've witnessed some pretty sad things to be honest in this industry Mm -hmm. um obviously i'm not going to call it any names and whatever but um yeah it's sad a lot of the times like i'm i don't want to be like like what's the most dickhead shit that a guy's ever tried to do oh my god okay you have to take into consideration that fuck i gotta choose my words (laughs) carefully here um a lot of the old school tattoo artists mm-hmm. are like old school guys and it just is what it is like men are men women are women mm-hmm. and women are just there yeah um so they'll use kind of like their they're like the fact that they are the owner of the shop or whatever to kind of manipulate girls to like hook up with them mm-hmm. or like I've seen, well, even with myself, like I've had to work for free for months and Mm -hmm. months um, and not an apprenticeship um, just because women are easily manipulated. Not so much, but like there's another side of all of that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like women are, honestly, some women are stupid Mm. and they kind of, they believe everything that's told to them. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying anybody deserves bad things to happen to them by any means, but um, just know your surroundings. Like, you know what you're walking into. You know, it is a male-dominated industry, so you have to have some tough skin to really make it, I think. For sure. For sure, yeah. For sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I can imagine just yeah. this... You know what I mean? You got a lot of people who even like come in from tat to get a tat and they're like smashed and stuff like that. And they're like, hey, babe, how you doing? Not so often. Like okay. people, I think that's more in like Vegas and maybe like downtown. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We close for, we close at like nine. So yeah, yeah. Um, we don't really get that riffraff all the time, but we have, we have had it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to like kind of draw the line to be professional and to be stern and to respect everybody involved type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have had my moments. Get the spaz out a couple of times. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have a bat behind my desk. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Sometimes you gotta, you know? You don't want to give us any of those ones, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, yeah. The reopening, it's happening this Saturday. Yes, yes. Right, um, I don't know if at this part of the interview where we're at now, uh, if, um, the place will be open at that point, right? What are some of the things that you want to see for the shop when it reopens? Well, to be honest, like after everything happened, um, we were open um, for a little bit. And then I did, I was faced with a personal, um, a personal loss. Mm -hmm. I lost somebody very close to me, also to gun violence. Um, Mm. So that kind of took a huge toll on me. And I kind of just, I was severely, severely depressed. Like yeah. I isolated myself completely. I didn't give a shit about the shop. I was just kind of like out of it. I wanted nothing to do with anything. I was mm-hmm. just kind of processing it. And um, I guess that's where like a lot of the backlash from the initial <laughs> events that happened mm-hmm. and like the mass shooting that happened. Um, and then this on top of it, I guess it was all kind of whatever. One thing after Compounded, another. Compounded, yeah. Yeah, so now it's been hard to get back into motion. Um, just everything, like last year was so crazy. Like it's, there's just so much that happened. Like so much. It's, 
Um, I'm just excited to get like a new, refreshed, like, go with things, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the, re for, re for the reopening. You know, um, the area, the, what is, what's their reception right now? Are they gonna be, you're gonna have people from the area coming in, getting tats and stuff like that? Well, it's so crazy after the shooting. Like people who, <laughs> like I'm telling you, have you seen some of the clients that came in? Like, I, honestly, I felt so appreciative and like. I was really blown away by mm. the support that the community really showed us. Yeah. Um, everybody was like, I want you to do my tattoo. I want you to do it. No, I want you to do it. I'm like, yeah. oh man, oh man. But um, we got so much positive support within the community, mm -hmm. which is really good because before, not many people really like liked me too much. Right. <laughs> um, just because of the whole stigma that comes with the tattoos, I guess. Tattoo shops yeah. and stuff, yeah. Wow, 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 yeah. wow, 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 wow. Dope, 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 yeah. dope, dope. Well, I really appreciate you, like, letting us come into the space here and, like, you know, me getting this sick tattoo letting here. Us put a crab on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and, you know, getting to hear your story, you know what I mean? Like, and getting to hear the story of the shop, too, right? Yeah. I think it's important, um, especially since, you know, you mentioned you've done a lot of different news clips and stuff like that, but the little clips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We get to dig deep when we get into these these yeah. types of conversations. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I really appreciate you coming through and speaking with us here Honestly, today. Honestly, thank you. I, yeah, I'm glad that you've got a crab on your arm now. <laughs> You're gonna remember us forever. Shout we out, did not. Oh, never. <laughs> and make sure to shout out the um the, the the shop, the social medias where like people can contact you or anything for to get tattoos done and etc. Okay. Um. Our Instagram is Skin Deep Tattoos 416. Mm -hmm. um, our Facebook is, I think you can put the same thing in and it will pop up on Facebook. Okay. Uh, we be, we do a lot of our promos. We have like crazy promos all the time. Yes. Um, customer appreciation and mm. we do a lot of giveaways. We're kind of like, we're good like that. So, dope, dope. Um, but yeah, you can come stop by 345 Danforth. Mm -hmm. We have a huge party. Well, not huge, but. It'll be a good party. It'll be a good party. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Champagne, you know, have some drinks. It'll be good. Dope, yeah. dope, 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 dope. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Yes. Six views. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't that bad. It didn't hurt. All right.